This is Max Preps Friday Night Live, powered by American Family Insurance. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Max Preps Friday Night Live, powered by American Family Insurance. I'm your host, Joanna Gomez. Joining me in the studio once again, Jason Alpert. I hope you guys had a fabulous Thanksgiving weekend. It's always great to see you. It is a good to be back. Thanksgiving has passed us. We had the week off, and I tell you, I just finished my leftovers today. So I can tell you the refrigerator's cleaned out, which got me ready to go for tonight, ready to go with high school football. You are going to kick me <laughs> and... Um, um, you can, but I can tell. Ah, I'm really, kidding. Really? It's You're going to go there? You're going to go there? <laughs> I, I'm, I am going to go there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we've got to bring in our third member, uh, Max Preps National Football Editor, Steve Spiewak. Steve, hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I know there's a lot to catch up on with you. But first, we are going to take our first live look in of the evening. We're going to go towards Mill Creek versus North Cobb. This live look brought to you by PlayOnSportsNetwork.com. Uh, North Cobb right now is up 42 to 35, and there's a timeout right now. Good looking game. Yeah, this is a state quarterfinal in the Class 6A out there in Georgia. Two top 10 teams in the state overall. North Cobb comes in at 10 and 2, Mill Creek 9 and 3. Steve, I think a lot of people thought this one was going to be pretty close. Yeah, North Cobb is led by a sensational sophomore, Tyler Queen, 6'1, 200 pounds. He's definitely a blue chip uh, quarterback recruit, more of a uh, traditional drop back passer, although he, he doesn't quite have the prototypical height. He's looked very impressive, and uh, I expect his best football is in front of him. Um, yeah, very good game. Uh, two teams that I think probably, you know, regardless of who wins, you know, will probably be an underdog going up against your more established traditional powers the rest of the way in what is a loaded class 6a bracket but we've talked about it earlier this year guys georgia high school football this season some outstanding teams and some outstanding playoff matches and this class 6a bracket has, has a bunch of them and the north cod mill creek game is definitely one of those uh you know exciting uh matchup between two very good teams no doubt. We're less than two minutes to go in this game. You can see the time and the quarter there with North Cobb leading the winner, and uh, they get the treat of playing the Lovejoy North Gwinnett winner, and that game also going on uh, this weekend right now. So this game, although a big one, it's going to set up just a bigger one in the semifinals, and you talk about this classification. We're now under a minute to go in this game. North Cobb looking to run out the clock to see if they can move on to the semifinals in Class 6A. Yeah, this is when it gets extremely exciting this time of year. This live look, this first live look of the evening brought to you by PlayOnSportsNetwork.com. And even though we were off last weekend because we were, of course, uh, celebrating for Thanksgiving weekend, there was a lot of football going on, and we missed a... Uh, Big football in Hawaii. A lot of celebrating going on on football fields across the country. <laughs> I know. Coach Reggie Torres from Kahuku Red Raiders, you know all too well about celebrating. First, let's say congratulations because you guys won your division last week. How does it feel? Oh, thank you. It's a great feeling. Our kids, they had a, they had a great game. Our seniors, what a way to uh, send them off. But, yeah, it's exciting. Our fans are crazy. It was crazy in Kahuku. You know, Coach, you all uh, ranked number three in the country, according to MaxPreps.com's Freeman rankings, which are 100% done by the computers. So they feed in all the number there of all 20,000 schools around this country, okay. and you all are currently ranked number three in the country. So that is something you must hang your hat on. Back-to-back -back state titles, three in the past seven years. But the longevity goes on. You have seven state titles in the past 13 years. How does this school keep up the tradition and the talent of success? Well, the thing is, we're a public school, so we're working with our kids within the community. But it's a tradition here where the kids grew up wanting to play football. We don't have a big high school. Our enrollment is about 900. But the, the thing is, we've got kids that w that's willing to work, put in the time and effort needed to be successful. Coach D. Spiewak here. Thank you so much for, uh, for making the time tonight. You've been through a lot in uh, in your tenure at Kahuku, and to have back-to-back uh, -back state titles uh, capped off by an undefeated season, um, truly, truly remarkable. I'm wondering, Coach, uh, we've seen some Hawaii teams take on some competitors from some other states. Uh, is that something that, you know, now that you guys have been so dominant uh, in the state of Hawaii, could you see Kahuku going out and playing a school from 
Southern California, from Washington, from Oregon. Is that something that interests you guys? Is that something that you think might be a possibility? Yeah, we, actually we do. Um, we're trying to set up a game in Utah next year. They, they're putting on, um, it's, it's almost like a Utah versus the nation. They bring in teams from out of state uh, to challenge their top teams. And we're one of the teams they're looking at. We're hoping to get that going. Now, Coach, um, many people are not familiar with Hawaii high school football, but, uh, you know, Manti Teo, some other uh, great players, I think people are becoming more familiar. You know, how would you describe the brand of high school football that's played in Hawaii for people that are less familiar with it? Um, physical. Physical. Our kids are here, they're physical players. Um, they're not the fastest. They're just physical, and, and they're very team-oriented. Kids here, they're, they're family-oriented, so it, it comes on as a uni unified thing here in Hawaii. Coach Torres, I'll tell you one thing that everyone is familiar with, the beach. So please enjoy <laughs> it and enjoy that win. Thank you very much for talking to us this evening. Uh, congratulations for them. It's great to hear, you know, all that success. It is. And, you know, we always like to throw in little tidbits here and there about these schools around the country. We mentioned 20,000 high school football teams around this country. But the probably most famous alumni of this particular school yeah. did not play football but now has become one of the biggest singers in the country is Jack Johnson. So. Yeah, he actually performed last week at the school, not for anything to do with football, with what happened with the football team, just for the school. So kind of a win-win for them there. It, it is, and how nice is that? He, he goes from playing, I'm guessing, I don't know, 18, 20,000 seat arenas to probably a, I don't know, 600 seat student alumni center <laughs> it's in hawaii right it's all, it good. Really it's all good all right speedwack you're not off the hook because we were off last week but um you had to work someone had to do it so tell us uh, what did we miss last week well we missed a, a major upset in the class 6a playoff bracket in the state of georgia we saw uh mill creek and north cobb going at it last week grayson which after an early season loss to Parkview had really turned it up and emerged as the, the favorite in that bracket, they went down to North Gwinnett. And as you can see the score there, it wasn't all that close. And, uh, you know, Grayson, that early season loss, they really turned it on. And then, you know, kind of an, an inexplicable playoff loss to North Gwinnett. North Gwinnett and head coach Bob Spire, very good program, very good team. But the way Grayson was playing, it shocked people around the state. And I can't help but wonder if this program was really distracted by all of the media attention and uh, off the field runaround with their number one recruit, Robert Kim Dietschy, who decommitted from Clemson and is rumored to be on the verge of committing to Ole Miss. Guys, everybody wanted a piece of Robert Kim Dietschy and of Grayson both during the season, before the season, and, and still to this day. And, uh, you know, I wonder if that didn't weigh on Grayson and their ability to focus on their games and instead of focusing on college next year. Um, so that was a, a shocking outcome from the state of Georgia. Another upset was in the state of Ohio and Mentor, the Cleveland area team with the high-powered five-wide offense. We had Coach Trivisano on the show a few weeks ago, and they had some really, really dramatic victories. They beat St. Edward with four unanswered touchdowns. And then the following week, they shocked St. Ignatius in three overtime. So this sort of looked like a team of destiny until Whitmer just pummeled them. Whit Whitmer from the central part of the state, um, you know, undefeated season, but was kind of untested against teams from either Cincinnati or Cleveland. So uh, kind of a surprise to Mentor, but they played some outstanding defense and they showed that like Mentor, they can put some points on the scoreboard. And now they're going up against Moeller tomorrow for the Division I state title in Ohio. So another uh, another major Thanksgiving weekend upset, this one from the state of Ohio. Steve, you put it so nicely when you said it like that. Oh, pummeled crushing. them. Crushing! <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, this time of year, it's not only about what's happening on the field for the teams. Everyone talks about it's a team game, team game. But when it comes down to individual records, it's really something to hang your hat on. Okay, what is it? Uh, I'm going to tell you, and Steve's going to tell you about it too. Last week, last time we were on the air, two weeks ago, excuse me, we told you Derrick Henry broke the all-time career rushing record yes. for the high schools. Yes. Well, this time around, it's on the receiving end. We have another career record, this one not for receiving yards, but for catches in a career. So, Steve, who is this, and how do you get the record? 
Yeah, so it's a young man named Davis Howe from the Christian Academy of Knoxville down in the state of Tennessee. He broke the all-time receptions record with his 350th career catch in the second quarter of the Class 3A state finals against Milan, a game that Christian Academy in Knoxville went on to win. Uh, The previous record was 349 held by a young man from the state of Ohio about four or five years ago. So not nearly the uh, the, the record of, of... longevity that Derrick Henry's uh, record was when he broke Ken Hall's rushing record, but 349 catches is quite a lot, Um, and he played in in an offense that really allowed him to just rack up tons of receptions, but the reception that broke the all-time record, guys, was a two-yard loss, so kind of of interesting that of all his uh, big plays he's had in his career, the one that put him over the top was uh, for a two-yard setback. You know, I don't really think it's a big deal. I, I, I if you win ugly, I, I, I don't care. Right. I just want you, winning is the important thing. And at the end of the day, I think it's just a good part of the story to tell for him, right? I mean, he can sit there and say, "I've got the all-time record." And Bo, by the way, guess how I did it? Negative. This is the negative side. Yeah. Am I on the right side? Mm-hmm. That's Whatever it, it was, anyhow. negative two yards on that catch. But regardless, he got the record, and that's a big one. <laughs> exactly. That's all that counts because at the end of the day, it's, it's a record. Ball. It's a record. Right? right. I tell you, you know that game we mentioned, the state championship game out there, and there are 20 states around the country who have crowned their state championships and the rest of the teams the rest of the states they are the ones in blue that's who's left to crown their state titles we will be with you over the next three weeks here on maxpreps.com friday night live as we count down every state and the playoff bracket and the state championships until all that map is colored red oh and it will be colored red very 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 soon sooner than later unfortunately uh and now it's time to take a live look outside our second live look brought to you by plansportsnetwork.com we've got bakersfield christian versus wasco and right now we really can't see or i can't 12-7, I'm hearing Bakersfield is leading. You know, if you're going by records alone, and uh, who doesn't? At least I do. Uh, Wasco comes into this one undefeated, 12-0 on the season in this round of the playoff. Bakersfield comes in with two losses, and I tell you, Wasco is rolling at least through the playoffs to this point. There are two playoff victories, the first two rounds of the CIF Central Section playoffs. 54-14, 63-13. 54-14, 63-13. Pretty high-powered offense, uh, Steve, but they're getting throttled right now by Bakersfield. Well, I actually uh, reached out to a writer in the uh, central section, Bakersfield area, because I was curious about Wasco's sophomore running back, Isaiah Sharp. I asked if he was the real deal, and I heard that he basically is. Guys, he has rushed. So far this season, entering tonight for 2,317 yards and 34 touchdowns, which are just remarkable, remarkable numbers for any player, let alone a 10th grader. Um, So he's a guy that could emerge as a major recruit from the central part of California. And it'll be interesting to see if they can get him going against uh, Bakersfield Christian, a team that they, uh, they beat during the regular season. Yeah, I mean, listen, our timing, we try so hard with these live look-ins on this game. We caught this one in a timeout right there. We'll recap it for you right here and see if we can get at least one play. And this is the CIF Central Section Division Four Championship game out in California. It's Bakersfield Christian Eagles taking on the Wasco Tigers. And right now, we've got at least one big play that we get to get on the air right there. Folks, the score is still <laughs> 7-6. And we will try to update you on scores throughout the night. But also, be sure to check this one out on MaxPreps.com. And that was Isaiah Sharp, the uh, sophomore sensation with the carry. They must have heard you talking about him, Steve. (laughs) This is Max Preps Friday Night Live, powered by American Family Insurance.